Okay guys, welcome back to part three of this series of videos. Um, engine insertion day. So, top tip for you. Um, and you've probably already noticed the eagle-eyed amongst you. I haven't got the sump on, which means the bottom of the engine is flat. So, these little jack standy things, you use them, tend to use them for custom bikes. Um, I think that's what they originally designed for, but I've got a couple of these. This one is a Sealy one, and I've got a blue one, which I think might be a Draper one or a generic Chinese one. But they're, like, they're little flat tables that you can raise and lower, um, and they lift a good load of weight. So if you haven't got the sump on the bike, um, on the bike, if you haven't got the sump on the engine, the engine's got a nice flat bottom, and it means you can rest it easy on there and, and you know, gently raise the engine up. Um, makes life a whole lot easier and then obviously there's not a lot to go in the sump there's a pressure release valve which you saw come out there's the oil strainer um what else is in there i think i've got the other bits in there and then it's just the sump and the sump gasket which is easy to easy to put on when the engine's in the frame so that's what we're going to do we're going to slowly lift this engine up um line everything up Rocky, can you believe it A compressor it hasn't been on for hours and it comes on just as I'm starting to speak um yeah so we're just gonna I've got the engine bolts ready down here I'm slowly lift it in and uh yeah once you've got one engine bolt in then you can rock the engine backwards and forwards and line everything else up torque all the engine bolts up um that's it really nothing super interesting I'll uh I'll show you as I go anyway and then I'm waiting on Still got no clutch for it. I'm waiting for the clutch to come. Uh, what else are we waiting for? There's a, a an eBay purchase of a full exhaust system, which um, is inbound, I think. So I've got to wait for that. Save me welding the other one up anyway. I've got a broken bolt to remove on one side out of the frame, and I've got a heli coil to do. Uh, what else have, have we got done? Uh, got to do... I think that's it. I'll show you the um, the bits laid out here, clean on the other side, ready to go together. Got everything washed off, and uh, yeah, happy days. Crack on. Yeah, nothing massively interesting here. Um, everything's just cleaned off. The sump's clean. New sump gasket. Everything all washed off. Squeaky clean. I cannot emphasise enough. Cleanliness. 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 Just everything squeaky clean. Um, Clutch cover there, ready to go, all cleaned off. New new clutch cover gasket. I have just had this delivered, which I think should be some of the outstanding bits. What have we got? We've got spark plugs. That's not what. Oh, I see. Stop it getting squashed in the post. There's an exhaust gasket there. Um, uh, don't do this on camera, Jim. Um, what am I trying to say? A, a gasket for the for where the muffler attaches, for the silencer attaches. Um, four of these little bad boys, which are the little pipes. Can't show you anyway. Parts and then the missing exhaust gasket. So I just need an exhaust system and a clutch. The clutch will be here today. The exhaust system will be God knows when, but hopefully soon because I really need to get this done. Right, onwards. Yeah, most of that was probably fast forwarded so you didn't see the jiggery poker here to do but basically and it every bike's different and every install is different but 
in this instance, the hole that was the easiest to get lined up initially were these two fronts. So I've got a bolt in here and a bolt opposite on the other side. That means now whenever I go up and down on the jack it pivots from this point so I can line the rest of the engine bolts up easy. So when you're installing, just as long as you can get one of the bolts in, excuse me, you can then usually manipulate the engine and get all the others in without too much of a faff. Anyway, consider that in. I'll talk all the bolts up. Front sprocket on, talk that up, back wheel in, clutch slave cylinder, all that paraphernalia on around here, and then throttle bodies, all the wiring, air box, and then sump. And then that's pretty pretty much all I can do until the clutch turns up and the exhaust pipe onwards. So we are making good progress here. And very soon I'm going to run out of things to do uh, because I'm waiting on these parts, as I keep saying. It's all going to plan so far. It's always a bit of a mind bender getting these things back together. I think my OCD slows me down a bit because I want all the wires in exactly the right place and it's all a bit... It's always a good idea actually if you're doing one for the first time, take some photographs of it all together so you can see cable runs and stuff. Although that isn't necessarily always a good idea because sometimes if they've been apart before stuff's already in the wrong place. But most workshop manuals have really good diagrams for the routing or the intended routing of cables and where the clips are and stuff. Most genuine shop manuals will have that sort of thing. Um, anyway, I waffle, so throttle body's next. Um, I've got all the wiring buttoned up pretty much, a couple of clips to go on. Most things are connected. That's for the fuel pump. That's for the throttle bodies. That's for the fuel tank. That's for throttle position sensor. Other side of the throttle bodies, a couple of vacuum pipes. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay guys, so the air box and throttle bodies and everything is on. Um, we're actually, <laughs> this is like day number three, or is it day number four now? Um, obviously I haven't been here the whole time, but I'm back on this today. Um, throttle bodies, basically all, all up here is all buttoned up. Um, good to go. Still waiting on this exhaust pipe to come, but the clutch has arrived. So let's just give you a zoomy down here, like this. Oh, for a cameraman. Um, let's get gloved up a bit so we can not get covered in oil. Right, okay, so let's lock up for me focus so it doesn't annoy the shit out of you. Uh, so the clutch has come. Um, so EBC clutch and TRW, which I think is Lucas Steels. So steel plates. There are nine steels, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yeah, nine steels. Um, two of them are... Oh my fucking days, are you kidding me? How does that keep happening? Uh, yeah, nine steels. Uh, two of them are thicker than the others, so there's... Oh, what, what are they? I think they're two mil. The thinner ones are two mil, and then the thicker ones are two point... 2.5 or 2.3. Anyway, the thing to be aware of, there's two of them are thicker than the others and they go in as you start putting the steels in. Um, fucking hell, I need to check. It's number th number four and number five in the stack. So you need to pay attention to that. And then the friction plates, um, they're the same. The friction plates, there's ten frictions and two of them are thicker. The thicker ones are... don't remember. I think the three and four mil or three and 3.7, 3.8 or something. Anyway, yeah, so the frictions, they came yesterday, top tip, excuse me, in front of the camera, 
they've been soaking in here overnight. Um, they have to be soaked and not just have a little bit of oil rubbing on them. Um, I'm in the, in the light a bit, aren't I? Let's see if I can move this. Let's go a bit higher with this light. Sorry about this, very professional, aren't I? I think I'd set the fucking shot up before I tried to actually shoot it. Might be better, slightly less shadowy. Um, no, that's not working for me. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jim. It was so professional. Go there without knocking the camera over. Let's try that. The light's going to set me hair on fire. That's better, isn't it? Um, where was I? Yeah, so the clutch plates have been sat in oil for 24 hours. Now, it's no good just rubbing a bit of oil on them before you put them together. I have first-hand experience of this back in my waffling gym, back in my racing days, FZR 400 RRSP, out for practice, clutch started to slip under load in the higher gears, thought no problem, got a new clutch, washed the clutch in it, you know, oil on the plates, put it all together. First race, first start, what, racing start, fucking no drive, just destroyed the fucking clutch, took the clutch cover off, just the bottom of the clutch cover was just, yeah, was all the friction material had come off the plates. So they've got a, they're, they're like little sponges. So they need to be in clean engine oil before you assemble them. And the top tip, and it sounds like I speak from experience, it's because I do, make sure you've got the right plates before you soak them in oil. Because um, <laughs> there's no sending them back once they've um, had an oil bath for 24 hours. Right, so assembly of said clutch. Let me get you a... So everything's clean and laid out, as you can see, new clutch cover gasket and stuff. Let me get you a better shot of the clutch housing um, and I'll talk you through putting it together. Right, so that's a, I think that's a slightly better look, isn't it, of what's going on here. Right, so to start with, um, thrust washer. There's a little bevel on this one side of it. The bevel faces the bearing. The bevel is just to relieve this washer and stop it rubbing on the outside bit of the race. I have seen them if you put it, put it the wrong way, which is quite easy to do if you're not paying attention. You do the clutch nut up, locks the whole clutch up, causes problems. So that way round, it doesn't really need it because it's going to be full of oil in there soon, but a smidgen of oil on there. So that, that way. And then the back of the clutch basket, everything's cleaned off. Oil pump drive gear. So there's a recess cut in this gear here. This goes, this isn't a how-to, so I'm just gonna blast through this. So it goes that way round. Basket rests on, like so. You sort of loosely line it up with the, um, with the crankshaft gear. Bearing, bit of, bit of oil. Okay, bearing goes in. And then spacer, there's no side to this spacer, it can go either way round, it doesn't matter. So that goes in there like that. We need to make sure that our oil pump drive gear is lined up. It's all the way home, like that. Right, centre of the basket. So there's a couple of bits in here that you need to pay attention to. Um, this little centerpiece, I'm not going to go into the weeds with clutches, but if you were just found this video and you're wondering how to put your clutch together, there's a couple of punch marks here that need to line up like that. There's another thrust washer somewhere here. No, that's the washer for the nuts. Another thrust washer, which is the smaller of the two. Goes on there. This assembly goes on here. Right, and then before we do the clutch nut up, um, we're going to start putting the plates in. So, let me get the plates out of here and drain all the oil off them. And then, yeah, and then I can just put them in without standing in front of the camera, um, getting in the way of the camera. Right, so... The things to pay attention to, and I'm not going down a rabbit hole of our clutches, I'm just putting this plumbing thing together because I haven't got time to make this longer than necessary. Um, there's two extra thick or two thicker steels and there's two thicker frictions. 
So to start with a thick friction Okay, then a thin steel, then a thin friction, thin steel, so that's the second steel we've put in, thin friction, thin steel, that's the third steel, thin friction, Now the fourth steel is one of the fat ones. Thin friction. The fifth steel is a thick one. And then all the way to the end. Right, and then the last friction, which doesn't go in the same groove, it goes in this other groove. Does that make sense? The last friction is the other thick friction, and that goes in the end like that. And there you have it, that is the clutch pack sort of together. Now then, do we up you of the nut? Right then, let's get out of the light. You better sharpen your pitchforks, guys, because I'm not going to use a torque wrench. The torque setting for this is... can't remember without looking in the book, but it's probably 60, 70, maybe a little bit higher foot-pounds, um, which is basically where I come from. That's FT, and you can work out what that stands for. Um, I'm going to make sure the thread is clean, which it is. We've got a beveled washer here, and they usually say outside on them, this one doesn't. So the, the raised section in the centre, so the outer edge is touching, and the inner edge isn't, if that makes sense. So the nut has got the inner edge to push against. Now, this is going to sound completely silly, but belt and braces and all that. Where's my nut gone? There it is. I always put... So the... Uh, go, go previous, Jim. These nuts, um, you can get away with using them again. They've got a little punchy piece that you... Anyway, I'm waffling. So I always put a little bit of thread lock on them as well. Doesn't say to do that in the manual. I just... My OCD makes me do it. So nut on. Okay. Get me windy gun. Excuse me. Stand in front of the camera. And that is tight enough. And then what we need to do this, uh, you saw this coming apart, but this shaft is splined. Um, and then we get a center punch and we punch in this outer edge of the nut into the shaft just to stop it from coming undone. I can hear a lot of you screaming saying you should be using a torque wrench. Here's the thing, right? 30 years this year, I've been building engines. I have never ever had an issue with a clutch nut either being too tight or coming undone or whatever it is. You just, it's the difference between the real world and the textbook. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the whole copper grease debate and <laughs> anyway, let's not fucking open that kind of worms, but yeah. Occasionally the textbook and the real world, they don't quite line up and I'm a massive geek and I'm massively into the theory of everything. Um, but yeah, there are, there are, there's a time and a place for an impact gun and this is one of the times I would use one. 
Uh, right, so that's all together. That punch mark lines up. Now then, we need a clutch push rod. Oh, he's in there already. Um, let me get a magnet, pull that clutch push rod out and show you it. Assuming it's magnetic, I think it's got steel ends on it. Or is it all al aluminium? No, it's metal. Yeah, so this is the other piece. You know there's that little short push rod that pushes through the seal on the other side? Well, this is the other bit that makes up the distance all the way through the centre of that shaft. And then it pushes on. Let's not lose that thrust washer. Come on now. Yeah, so it pushes on this piece, on this, on this, what would you call this? Actuator. Are we getting that? And this actuator has a as a thrust washer as part of it. Not sure how well my... Oh, I've locked the focus out, didn't I? So it needs to be by here to focus. Yes, yeah, so it pushes on the end of there, and this is what, what pushes the... opens and closes the thrust... Blah, 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 opens and closes the... pushes on the... fucking hell, Jim. Pushes on the outer bit of the clutch basket. Right, so... What we may need to do is just push this in slightly because the clutch slave cylinder on the other side, the piston for the slave cylinder is all the way out because nothing's been stopping it and there's a spring in that slave cylinder which pushes on the piston in the slave cylinder and makes, and makes sure that the piston is always taking up any slack. Does that make any sense? Um, so when you grab the clutch, you've always got a full lever, always got full throw. So that needs, that's not uncommon, you've got to push that back in. Right, uh, sometimes they have a punch mark. This one does not. So this one can go, and you'd also see a punch mark on this bit of the basket. This one will go in any position. Like that. Springs. These screws are washed, they've just had oil drip all over them. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the clutch slave cylinder is pushing this back out again. Come on now. That's it. Let's get a couple of screws in just to hold it. Started or not? I need a T bar. Here we go. Let's just move that clutch lever a minute. Okay. Okay, so no thread lock here. But we will. You'll be glad to hear using a torque wrench. <laughs> these are really easy to strip. Actually these are not so bad because the post that they're threaded into is actually a steel thread. A lot of clutch baskets, they're, um, the bolt screws into aluminium, the posts in the basket are aluminium and uh, yeah super easy to strip. And they are Seven foot pound, which is basically NFT, not, and you can work out the rest. FT, right? Okay, what's happening? I thought they were all seated, no, not quite. Okay, 
trying to, <laughs> this is really hard to try and not be in the shot. When you're talking something, try and do it in one sort of movement. Because what will happen is, not so much with lower torqued um, bolts like these, but if you sort of get nearly to torque and then go back and have another bite at it, you'll find the torque wrench will click off straight away. If that makes sense, you need to do it in one nice continuous movement and click off on the torque wrench. Torque is a fucking hell, you could get right in the weeds talking about that. Anyway, so that's together. Uh, clutch basket. Look at that. Clutch cover. So I've got a new clutch cover gasket. A um, couple of dowels. Like with the other cover, where this wire passes through, see that one's actually, this rubber piece is loose in here, so that'll need a little bit of silicon around the back of it. And a little bit over the top, another couple of little bits of sealer where the crankcase halves join here and here. New gasket, wash that on. Tighten the clutch cover up. Put these clips in the right place. That's pretty much it, sump's all on. Uh, just waiting on this bloody exhaust pipe now. Oh, and I got a couple of broken bolts to get out of the frame, but I probably won't film that. So you'll get to see it with the exhaust on and starting up, and then that'll probably pretty much do this, the end of this part three. Right, catch you later. Right, sorry for the weird shot, but I'm about to smash my camera up. It won't focus on my face. I was trying to sit next to the bike and be all arty, and I've given up. Anyway, it's done. The exhaust pipe arrived, the eBay purchase. Um, I'll flash you some pictures of that on the screen so it came and it was a little bit ropey not rusty but just somebody been at it with a rattle can and made a right arse of it so i spent a good long time with some scotch bright um cleaning it up prior to painting it um i suppose is the top tip there if you're gonna use scotch bright hang on hold that thought there's lots of crap available um, but you just, uh, what, am I, what am I talking about? If you're going to use Scotch Bright, use real Scotch Bright. Um, the stuff I use most of is the is the fine, the red pads. I get through loads of it. It's brilliant for cleaning gasket surfaces. Um, I'm going to focus back on me. Here I am. Look, here I am. Can you fucking focus on me? It's got me. Yeah, I use um, loads of the red stuff for cleaning gasket surfaces, all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah. Gave the exhaust a real good clean up with some Scotch Bright. It's come up a treat. And then the paint I use, another top tip. I think I've got an empty tin here. Hang on. Mm, where are we? I don't really want to give away all my trade secrets in one episode, but are we getting that? It's worth stuff. Uh, worth lacquer spray but it's the heat resistant one not to be confused with their normal matte black paint because the, their matte black paint which can, comes in a tin that looks exactly like this is not the same so you need to get the heat resistant one um, absolutely awesome this paint it once it's it has to be heated to go off properly so like on an exhaust pipe if you spill petrol or something let me try and sit by this bike again this is really annoying me are you gonna focus on my face probably not yeah, you've got to um, you've got to let the heat of the you know the exhaust system make it go off. Otherwise, it's not resistant to petrol or brake clean or anything until it's been baked. But once it's been baked on, it's absolutely epic paint. Um, yeah, I'll flash some pictures up on the screen of that paint. Um, so the exhaust's all on. What else did we have to do? Um, there's quite a lot going on off camera because it's having a bit of a mare with it and just trying to get it finished. So massive pain in the ass with the... Um, so it all went back together. Fucking stop waffling, Jim. It all went back together. Thought, you know, I, I thought in my mind, oh, it's done. I'll just, you know, fire it up, right up and down the road, even though it's hasn't got any front brakes. So I've, I've, I have started it clearly already. You know this. Um, the front brakes are missing because the guy is doing something with them, which makes road testing pretty difficult. And a job like this, 
you know, massive engine out, engine apart. I really, really want to ride it in anger and make sure it's all fine. And unfortunately, because of the lack of front brake, I can't. But I live on a real quiet bit of lane. And I've been up and down the lane on it. All the gears are there. Clutch is lovely. No leaks. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, you know, it's... That's as much of a road test as I'm prepared to do without, um... Without a front brake. Yeah, so getting it going. Went to get it started. Fuel pump wouldn't prime. It's like, what is going on? Well, initially it wouldn't crank, actually. That was the thing. Um, or it would crank for a second. And then... It, it, anyway, what happened was... You know the... Get to the point, Jim, because people aren't going to want to watch this. You know when you turn the ignition on and with a Suzuki, the fuel pump primes for like four or five seconds? Well, during that four or five second period, it would crank over okay. And then once the... Basically, once the live to the fuel pump went away, the live to the starter solenoid also went away and it wouldn't, wouldn't crank. Anyway, it's got a data tool alarm on it. So I've... Luckily, it's one of those ones that came... The data tool Evo, the like pre-System 3 data tools, like fucking, well, as old as the bike, 20 years old nearly, the alarm system. So it's ha hardly a wonder that it's gone wrong. So it's got a, um, I'll show you some pictures of it. It's got, uh, what am I trying to say? It's got a, a, a like a custom Hayabusa wiring loom that came with it. So it means disconnecting it is, is super simple. There's some connection blocks up by the... Um, headstock and you basically when you were fitting it originally you'd break the connection and then connect in line same for the fuel pump so it was really easy to take it out of the system anyway all my all my issues with the fuel pump not priming and it not cranking all those issues went away actually bar one the fuel pump i had a live to the fuel pump then constantly but it wouldn't um fuel pump wouldn't turn anyway tappy tappy with a rubber hammer and the fuel pump came to life i think it's the throttle bodies and fuel pump have been propped up on a on a shelf here sort of in storage for a couple of weeks while I've been dicking around with it and whether some shit's got in the fuel pump it needs to be investigated I've had a look in the fuel tank the fuel tanks are quite rusty in there but I've told the owner that he needs to get the fuel tank sorted and told him about the issue with the uh, fuel pump not priming right anyway fucking hell Jim right start it up start it up uh, do with me mic okay Exactly the uh, the artiest shot in the world, is it? Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Um, I think that's it, really, guys. Uh, I'd wanted to do a road testy video on it afterwards, but of course, no front brakes makes it pretty uh, would be a little bit sketchy without front brake. Um, Thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making it. It's been um, fun getting the camera out again. Just wanted to say a massive thank you as well to my patrons. There's been a few new ones over the course of this series of videos, which I really appreciate. Thanks very much guys. And um, I hope 2021 is a better year for you all. Um, I know a lot of you have struggled or some of you have struggled. Some of us have struggled with uh, the whole lockdown COVID thing, but hopefully 2021 is going to be a a happier time. Take it easy guys and I'll see you on the next one.